Education, freedom, or school choice is one of Governor Greg Abbott's emergency items this legislative session. It has divided legislators and the education community. In tonight's CBS 7 special report, I dive into school choice and Senate Bill 8 and what it means for public education in West Texas. The solution to all of this is to empower parents to choose the school that's right for them, and that's what we will pass this legislative session here in Austin, Texas. Senate Bill 8 allows families to use taxpayer money to send their children to private school, home school, or even a charter school. Governor Abbott says he's putting power back into parents' hands. Public education advocates say it harms public education. Anything that is going to divert money uh, from public schools and uh, the, the, the resources that, that our kids have access to, um, we're going to come out strongly in opposition to that. Even the mere term school choice could be misleading, according to opponents of the bill. We've always had school choice. I have no problem if someone as a parent decides, I think it's best for my son or daughter to stay home, I'm going to homeschool them. I have no problem with that. We are supporters of parents having choices. In fact, we call ourselves a school choice. But what we see happening in our state today uh, is school vouchers. One of the biggest questions surrounding school choice initiatives is that of transparency. Tax-funded public schools are required to adhere to strict educational and financial guidelines. Think star testing, for example. Private schools, even if given public dollars through Senate Bill 8, would not. The tax dollars that I pay would be going to an entity uh, and I wouldn't know anything about it. What are they teaching? How are they held accountable? Are they good? Are they an A? Are they a C? Are they an F? Um, you know, there should be a whole lot of accountability strings attached to those dollars, just like we have accountability strings. Additionally, private schools would not have to accept all students or provide resources for students with intellectual or physical disabilities. And let's accept all kids. If they live in your area, let's accept. And then we're on a level playing field, okay? Now let's go. Senate Bill 8 proposes that parents could receive $8,000 per child in taxpayer dollars to go towards alternative non-public schooling. So how does that directly affect public schools? It's an example. Um, a, a third grade classroom has 25 children and we receive the funding for those 25 children and we pay the salary of the teacher. Um, if two of those students transitioned to a private school environment, $16,000 would leave ECISD and transition to that private school. But we would still have to pay the salary of that teacher that serves those 23 students in that third grade classroom. Governor Abbott says his education freedom initiative does not mean he has forgotten public education. But he says parents should have a say in fighting against what he describes as a, quote, woke agenda. There's no reason why any student should have a woke agenda pushed on them. Our schools are for education, not indoctrination. As for West Texas, Big Spring Superintendent Jay McWilliams says liberal indoctrination is not a top concern. Is that an issue for us in Big Spring ISD? No. Has it been an issue? No. Has it ever been brought to my attention? No. Most of West Texas, I don't think it's a big issue. For public school advocates, increased funding to public schools should be top priority. And parents who choose to send their children to private schools should do so without using public dollars. We have a lot of work just to do within our public education system, let alone create a, a new parallel system with no accountability whatsoever.